How long do you think he'll be gone? As long as it takes to find him. And if you don't find him? I don't want to think of that. Can you talk some, some sense into him, Brian? Mac knows it's a long shot, Jamie. Long shots come in. Not very often. But they do come in. I heard there's been some problems on Highway 5 past Edison. Are you going that way? I'm going Highway 5, but I don't think I'll have to go as far as Essen. Come here, I'll show you. I got the map open. All right. Where is that map? Well, it was right here. Rachel was looking at it. Maybe it the Hey, honey. Hey, sweetheart. Hi, Dad. Where's your mommy? She's gone. She's what? Gone. Rachel? Rachel? I was just doing a little reminiscing. About Charlie? Yeah. I was looking through some family pictures. It's hard to believe that the man on those photographs is gone. Well, nobody can ever take away your memories, though, Clarice. If you have those, Charlie will always be here. Yeah, I guess so. Are you sure you're holding up okay? Yeah, I'm a little shaky, but I'm okay. The memorial service was lovely. Everybody was so kind. Yeah, well, we're all real sorry about your father. Everybody loved him. Thanks, Blaine. I appreciate that. I guess it just takes a little time to get used to. Yeah. Uh, Clarice, could I come over for a little while? <laughs> sure, but you don't have to. For me, I'm okay. Uh, there's something else that I want to talk to you about. Sounds serious. It could be, Clarice. Well, sure, come on over. Well, Larry's not there, is he? No, um, he had to go to the station after the service, and he won't be off duty for a while yet. Okay, then I'll be over right away. Blaine, what's all the mystery? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just that we have to talk, Clarice, alone. You're going to make Nancy just another pretty, spoiled, rotten kid. That's exactly what she is, another pretty, spoiled, rotten kid. You know, I can't get that doll away from her that Santa dropped on the Yeah, well, she's going to have to take it with her because we have to get out of here in about ten minutes. Ten minutes? All right, All right. okay, you got it. Hey. What? Well, do I look all right? Fantabulous, as usual. Can I ever get a straight answer out of you? Here's a straight answer. Uh, <laughs> why? And now, the continuing story of another world. Um, uh, 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 Amanda, darling, where, where did Mommy go? Hmm? In the car. She didn't walk away? Hmm? She went in the car? Are you sure? You I'll real go, sure, darling? I'll go check outside, Mac. I'll be right back. Okay. Look, Amanda, did Mommy say anything to you? Before she left? Nothing? You tell Daddy everything. Did she say anything? 
she didn't say to tell Dad anything? Mac, do you think it's possible that she went to see Ada one last time? No, I don't think so. She wouldn't have gone without letting us know, and she knew how little time there was left. Look, sweetheart, did you see Mommy go in the car and take off? You sure? All right, now you go out there and talk to Vivian. She's waiting for you, right out there. Oh, Brian, I hope she's well. Oh, yes, Mac. If Rachel's really left, it could be serious, very serious. She's due back at the prison. I know that, but what can we do? Any sign of her? Nope, station wagon's gone. They look really pretty. What does? Flowers and everything, they look pretty. Oh, yeah. It's nice seeing flowers in the middle of winter. A lot of people must have cared about them. They did. I've been getting them all week. It's just one here. I've always liked it. It's a chrysanthemum. Yeah, I like them. I'm sorry to bother you like this, Mrs. Hobson. I, I know it's not a, a good time. But I gotta get back to Wisconsin today, and I didn't want to leave without first having a, a chance to talk with you without a lot of other people around. Can I get you something? Uh, no, no thanks. How about a nice hot cup of tea? No, I don't think so. Um, I really want is a, is a little time to talk about. Father. I figured that's why you came here. Why don't you sit down? It's okay then? It's, uh, it's a little hard for me to I talk about Charlie right now. I know, but, but right now is, is the last chance I got. Mrs. Hobson. Ada. Please, Ada. I need you to understand. I never really knew my father. He left when I was really little. Okay, I know. There was you and uh, Clarice and Denny. Yeah. Clarice was the closest thing to a mother that I ever knew. And, and we kept her really busy. She never had time to stop and talk about him. Well, what about Denny? Didn't, uh, didn't he tell you anything about him? <sighs> Plenty. All bad. He never really had anything kind to say about him. You must have grown up hating Charlie. <sighs> A little. All I knew was what Denny told me. But at the service today, I heard Larry talking about this guy I thought I hated. And how good he was and everything. It didn't sound like the usual stuff somebody says when somebody dies. You meant it. It's like the flowers mean it. You know what, Charlie? Was a good man to everybody. It's so tough. That's why I'm here. I mean, all of a sudden, I realize that, that, that I've lost something. Something... Something I never knew. Something I, I can't get back. My father. We've both lost something. Please, Ada, tell me about him. Sit down.
you so fast. Well, what is it that's so important that we have to talk about it? Well, we still have a little time before Rachel has to get back to the prison. What will happen if she is not there? Well, she'll be considered escaped. And it go much harder on her once she's found, and they will try to find her. That means we've got to find her first, right away. If we can find her, now what are we going to do? Well, look, first let me call the prison authorities and see if I can get an extension on her deadline. That might buy us a little time. But how can you do that without telling them that she's gone? Well, I'll tell them we're having car trouble, which is not exactly a lie. I cannot believe Mom would be so foolish, Mac. What puzzles me is why she did it and where'd she go? Mac. I should have known. What's wrong? The envelope is gone. What? Don't you remember? We were looking for it when Amanda came in. But I know that I put it right there. Rachel must have taken it with her. Wait a minute. The envelope with the route that those people say they took when they supposedly gave some man a ride? Well, Mac, we don't even know if... if their story was on the level, much less that the man they picked up was Mitch, and now Mom's run off with it. On what could be a wild goose chase, Mac. I don't think you should have ever shown that to her. Much less talk about it with her. Jamie. You should have known it would try to set her off somehow. You think that I'm responsible for Rachel running off? Is that what you're Look, saying? all I'm saying is you supplied her with a reason for leaving. Well, isn't that a little unfair? I don't see why. The reason I told your mother about my plan to find Mitch and the map was simply to give her a little hope. One small ray of light at the end of a very long, dark tunnel. Yes, a very small ray. Well, right? maybe so. But just giving her a shred of good news made me feel good just to see how much that meant yeah, to her. Well, if her taking that map gave her the idea of trying to find Mitch herself, she's placing herself in a lot of physical danger, Mac. We have no way of knowing that for sure. Well, th there's a good chance she would be. I mean, you going out on the road, that was one thing. But with her, it's totally ridiculous, Mac. I managed to buy us a couple of hours leeway with the prison authorities. Were they overly curious? No, but I couldn't press them for any more time. Now the only question is, what do we do with the time we've got? Well, the only thing we've got to go on is that map. Yeah, and Mom took that. Rachel has it? Yes. Yes, she must have taken it when we didn't see her. But I've looked at that map so many times that I'm sure I have it completely memorized. Well, where do we start? I know the direction she started out in and I know where she was probably headed for. I think we better sit down. It does sound serious. I'm going to get some coffee. You want some? No, no, thank you. Um, I just want to talk to you while we're still alone. Well, don't worry about that. They will probably get a police call. That'll take forever. I just wish once they would have a 24-hour ceasefire on crime. Clarice, I don't know how to get into this. I'm certainly the last person in the world who has any right to say this. It's about Larry? You know? No, but I know you pretty well. Maybe we're on the same wavelength. I don't know what's gotten into him the past couple of weeks. He's changed in, in a lot of ways. I know. I've been trying to accept the fact that maybe there's another side to his personality. No. I mean, it's never been there before. The whole time we were growing up on the ranch in Wyoming, we had nothing. And yeah, Larry always talked about wanting to get out and, and make it a better way of life for himself. He told me that the two of you used to fantasize about driving down Fifth Avenue in New York in a mile-long Cadillac. Yeah, right. Well, Larry was always much different about it than I was. He was always under control. I mean, there was nothing else we could do but fantasize. I remember one time I stole a piece of licorice from a store. It only cost a penny, but he made me take it back. I guess he was a born policeman. Yeah. He's always been that way. I mean, we both hated being poor. We both wanted things, but... Clarice Larry always wanted to do it the right way. Are you saying that you think that that's changed? I don't know. Are you trying to tell me something specific, Blaine? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, it's just all this stuff now about about this fancy new car and and now about the house. And those expensive Christmas gifts. I couldn't believe it. I don't know how to believe it. 
It's not like Larry. He's never put material things first. I know. And it's like, suddenly, he's got to have everything now. It's like it's so important, like it's all going to disappear, Blaine. Do you know what it is? Do you have any idea? Maybe he just wants what's best for you and Corey. But Corey and I, we have everything we want as long as we have Larry. He's always known that. It's just recently that he doesn't seem to realize it, and that's what I don't understand. I know. I think that's what bothers me most. You see, I think that somehow I'm to blame for this change in Larry's attitude. Blaine, don't be ridiculous. How could you be to blame? Well, just think about it for a minute. It wasn't until I started getting things. It wasn't until I introduced Larry to Jordan that this change in him came about. I, I don't see how Jordan Scott could have anything to do with it. Well, I'm not sure exactly either. I just wish there was something that I could do about it. What do we have here, a little singing act from a stool pigeon? Larry? Couldn't wait, Blaine, could you? Just had to use the first chance she got to come over and tell Clarice all about it. And I loved him very much. I can tell. He's a very lucky man. I wish I'd known him. Well, you can't let it hurt your future. You can, uh... You can only make sure that you don't let other opportunities get away from you. Well, sometimes that's hard to do. You'll do it. What are your plans? <sighs> Play hockey, go to school. <laughs> In that order? <laughs> now you sound like Clarice. Is that bad? <laughs> Maybe not. You could sound like Danny. He's always after me. He's the one with the real brains in the family. Denny. Mac Corey has a grandson named Dennis. Oh, yeah, but his name isn't Dennis. It's uh, Denver. <laughs> Imagine that. Clarice Denver Lee, spelled L-E-I-G-H. <laughs> Mom and Charlie could really pick him. Well, it could be worse. I don't know. It seems like I've spent half my life having to spell my name out for people. I bet you never had to spell Ada out for anyone. Nope. Even spell backwards, it spells Ada. <laughs> I want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming by and for talking and for listening. I'd like to do it again. Sure. Wait a minute. got that much time. Where, where do we start looking? What do you mean, we? Well, Mac, I'm not going to let you go out and look for Mom by yourself. Please, Jamie, there's no time to argue. All this. right, then it's settled. Jamie. Look, I was perfectly willing to let you go out on what I believe to be a wild goose chase alone, but this is completely different. Too much is at stake. Jamie, I don't want you to get involved in this, this mess. You said yourself that I'm responsible for the yes, whole thing. Yes, responsible for getting her into this, not responsible for getting her back out. Anyway, one of us should be at the complex. Look, this is Mom we're, we're, we're talking about. And she's the one who's going to be in any danger. So I think it's she should you, you should be worrying about, not me or the complex. But I am worried about her, Jamie. I know. Look, Mac, I think that Cecile can cover for us while we're gone. Oh, Jamie, I don't know. No, Mac, I know she can handle the job. For a few days, at least. Mac, this is very important to me. I think we should do this together. Mac, Jamie, Jamie might be right. And if there's any trouble, you, you may need someone else. Mac? All right. We'll go 
together. With both of us driving and looking, perhaps it'll save us some time. Besides, there's always a chance that Rachel will get a mile or two and then realize what she's doing and turn around and come back. I hope you're right, Brian. Rachel's a level-headed woman. I can't believe that she'd do anything irrational. Now, I better get back to my office in the event that Rachel tries to reach me there. All right. Oh, now, you will keep me posted on what you're going to do. Yes, of course. I'd better call Cecilia. Yes, I've got arrangements to make, too. I was already preparing for it, but I didn't know it was going to come this soon. Lane had to tell me all about what? What's the matter with you, Larry? You just had to rush over here and tell Clarice about the loan I got from Jordan in order to buy the house, didn't you? Loan? Oh, don't play dumb, Blaine. I'll bet you it was a nice piece of pillow talk between you and Jordan. But it got better when you told Clarice. Larry, no, I didn't even oh, know I about it. Oh, I bet you didn't, Blaine. You act so self-righteous all the time. And meanwhile, you're some fancy little hostess at the arena living with Jordan, Scott, and Bayview Towers while he buys you all these little clothes, right? You act like I'm committing some kind of crime or something. Blaine, I think that maybe you better go. Oh, yeah, why don't you go, Blaine? You've already said what you had to say, had your little fun. Larry, I didn't say anything. Don't try and grease me, Blaine. I'm a cop. I don't want to hear it. Are you going to tell me what this is all about? All right, thanks for letting me come by. It's all right. I'm the tone of your voice at a time. Must be something very serious. Yeah, I'm sorry to barge in. I didn't want to talk about this. That's all right. Come on down here. Uh, what is this? Is there some kind of problem? Yeah. Listen, Cecile, I don't want any of this to leave this room. I have to let you in on it for what will become obvious reasons. Well, of course. Cecile, uh... My mom is missing. <laughs> missing? What do you mean? Just what it sounds like. She's disappeared. I don't understand. How could she? Well, Brian was supposed to take her back to the prison today, and she went outside for a walk with Amanda, and she left. Why? Well, that's not important. What is important is that she's gone. You don't know where she went? Well, Mac has an idea where she might have gone, and uh, we're going to try and find her. We don't know how long it'll take. Wait, both of you? Yeah. That's why I came over here. I, Mac and I have a very large favor to ask of you. Well, sure. You know, I'd do anything for the two of you. We want you to cover for us at the complex while we're gone. Now, I know that's, that's a lot to ask of you and what would bother No, you. it's not at all, Jamie. I can handle it. You know that I'd do whatever I can for the two of you. Any time. Well, I know you can, but I just wish there weren't a need to ask you this time. Oh. You and Mac must be terribly worried. Yeah, well, she's in a lot of trouble. She should never have gone like this. Well, I want you at least to know that you can go look for Rachel without having to worry about anything at the complex. Well, I know that. That's why I suggested it to Mac. Really? You suggested it? Yeah. Well, he didn't want me going with him, you know, leaving the complex. And you convinced him that I could take over? Yes. Jamie, I won't let you down. I'll do everything in my power to make sure that things continue to run smoothly. And I'll uh, try to keep quiet as long as possible the reasons for your absence. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, thank you for trusting me. I don't know what I'd do without you. Oh. Oh. Well, there's just not much left to say. Will you stop being so crazy and talk to me? Well, look, you already know everything there is to know anyway. I'm sure Blaine was your real informative. I don't understand you, Larry. If, if I know anything, it's not because Blaine told me. It's because you came and told both of us that you got a loan from Jordan Scott. Oh, yes, if Blaine didn't already know? Well, Blaine didn't know. I mean, she thought something was up. That's why she came over to talk to me. Blaine doesn't waste her time on small talk. That wasn't small talk. That's what I said. Larry... Look, don't you have anything to eat around here? Will, will you stop yelling at me? Have you forgotten what kind of day this has been for me? Look, I can't help what kind of day it's been. You could try. You were wonderful at Paso Memorial today. Yeah, well, Blaine sort of spoiled that, didn't she? Will you get off Blaine's case? She came over because she's concerned about you and your new attitude. Oh, my new attitude? Well, it's true. I, I don't believe that. 
You mean you think I'm lying to you? I mean, I think that you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing that I know. Oh, yeah? Okay, tell me, what is it that you know? I am not going to live in a house that's bought for us with Jordan Scott's money. And you're not going to shove me around. Maurice. Listen, no, I mean it. I never thought that we'd be arguing about something like this, but I won't live in it. Just don't be stupid. Stupid? Sure, that's what I am. I'm sure. I mean, I have the right to make some decisions about our family, especially when I know they're very right. Oh, fine, great. Then I'll just live in the house all by myself. Larry! Hi. Maybe I'll come back later. No, no, no. You stay. You stay. I'm leaving. I'm afraid that's all we know so far, as if that weren't bad enough. It's hard to believe that Rachel just took off like that. I can't believe it. We're all in a state of shock. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to take care of the children while we're gone. Well, Jamie's going with you? Yes. He wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, well, he loves Rachel as much as you do. Yes, I'll I know he things. does. I appreciate it, Ada. I know how hard this is on you with Charlie just gone, but... I'm just sorry. That's all I can say. Don't be. I have to help my family. Besides, it'd be good for me to get out of this house. Anything I can do to help? No, thanks. I'll only be a few minutes. Mac. I, do you think that you and Jamie are doing the right thing? What do you mean? Well, I mean, going after Rachel alone like this. I don't know what else we can do. She's got to be found. Well, I just thought that maybe there was something you could do. Oh, like calling the police? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, maybe it would be the right thing. Maybe they'd find her right away and, and you know, and then there wouldn't be any harm done. No, Ada, the minute she left Brian's custody, she was in terrible trouble. We've got to find her to get her to give herself up before the police reach her, not to make it any worse. As long as you're sure. Yes. Brian is the one that brought it up. Sending the police after it would make everything much, much harder on Rachel. Right now. Why, what do you mean, right now? Well, I mean, if Jamie and I can find her before something else happens. Well, what could happen to her? Well, it, it's only wise to assume that something could happen, so we've got to get to her as soon as we can. Oh, I don't know. Jamie thinks I never should have told her about Mitch. Or that I should have seen some signs in her interest in the map and her questions. What'd she ask you? Well, she just said, where did the map go to? And was it cold out there? How was the weather out there? I suppose I could have picked up on that. Well, you, you couldn't have known. Jamie thinks I could have. Well, all you wanted to do was make Rachel happy. I mean, to give her some hope. I don't know. Maybe he's right. He's certainly furious. But I didn't know what else to do. I, I was so wrapped up in my own plans. Well, look, Mac, as soon as Rachel sees what she, she's done, you know, she'll turn around and come back. But if she doesn't... Well, then you and Jamie will find her. Yes. But will we find her in time? Clarice, you all right? Yeah. What was that all about? Where have you been? Wait a minute, that's an answer? No, I mean, Larry no. looked like he was about to... I don't want to talk about Larry. I, there are some things that I have to talk to you about. Then he called. Oh, did he phone or did he just yell across Lake Michigan? He, he phoned and uh, he wants to be sure that you're coming home today. <laughs> well, how about that? Sounds like he misses me. Well, I think that he's concerned about your missing classes. That's Denny. My truant officer. What about you? Aren't you concerned about missing school? Sure, but it's not the classes I'm worried about. It's the practices. You haven't changed a bit since you were growing up. Sure I have. I've gotten even better. <laughs> I hope you're talking about your classes. <laughs> Whatever you say, Clarice. Well, maybe I better say hockey. It's more likely. <laughs> Jenny said you're playing real well. Yeah, yeah, but, but hockey's something you really gotta, you know, keep on top of, you know. Stick handling, puck control, skating. Yeah, yeah, I got it, Bobby Moore. <laughs> That's uh, Bobby Orr, Clarice. Oh. Bobby Moore. Bobby Orr. 
But, you know, I'm sure that you got to do that for every sport, but... Did I ever you... tell you about the game we played against Carlton? Oh, <laughs> guy... oh, wait, wait, no. Wait a minute. W will you tell me where you've been? Where'd you get that flower? Ada gave it to me. Ada? Did you go and see her? No. Yeah. Why? Well, it was something I had to... Clear up for myself. A lot of things that I, I just realized. What? What'd you realize? Clarice, our father died this week, and I didn't even know. You were very young. <laughs> yeah, but I, I lived my whole life resenting him, almost hating him. Don't say that. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, I didn't even know. Him. Why he did what he did, why he left us. I just knew we were alone. He had to take care of us the only way he knew how to. He had to be on the road. I guess I know that now. I guess I understand. I'm glad you do. It helped a lot. She told me a lot of things about, about this Charlie Hobson, my father, that I never really wanted to face before. Whatever Ada said was true. He was a wonderful man. And the truth can hurt too, you know. I mean, over the past couple days, I've come to realize that he was a good man. It makes it hurt all the more. I know. Lost all that time. All those years. That I finally know enough to miss him. It's too late. Not around. I know. It hurts now, but we got each other. Jamie. Don't talk. Oh no, Jamie. Shh. that you have to be going. I don't want to keep you any longer than you have to. I wish I didn't have to. Yeah, but you do. I wish this whole thing with Mom and Mick. I just wish I didn't have to leave. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we just shouldn't keep Mac waiting. You know, I remember a time when we were together. <laughs> Those were good times, weren't they? Yes. And we'll have good times again. You really think so? After this whole thing is over. <laughs> Absolutely. Ah, oh, we could just be together. Like this. If I had nowhere to go. Mm, but you do. <sighs> Jamie? How long do you think that you and Mac will be gone? Why? Well, there are going to be a lot of things I'm going to have to do that will depend on how long the two of you are going to be away from the complex. Well, I don't know, I guess, as, as long as it takes. I mean, how long do you think it's going to take? A few days, a week? I don't know. We have to cover a lot of territory. Yeah. Well, I guess it really doesn't matter. I'll just do what I have to do. Well, of course. Jamie, I know that this is going to be very hard. I'm going to try to make all the right decisions. And all the decisions that I know that you and Mac will support. Well, I know. I have every confidence in the world in your ability to handle the job. Are you sure? Hey, I just said it. And what about Mac? Mac believes in you 100%. He's seen the way you work, and he knows you can do the job. Yeah, well, it's a big job, and... And, Jamie, there are decisions that have to be made daily. Then just go ahead and make them. Well, will I be hearing from the two of you? Well, I'm sure Mac will want to, you know, be in touch. Especially if this thing gets really drawn out. But then I don't know. If he thinks that the police are using him or me to find Mom, I don't think it'll be possible. That means that I'll have to do it on my own. I'll have to make all the decisions on my own. That's right. You make whatever decision you feel is right at the moment. 
Jamie, I know how important it is that the complex operate in your max absence. And I'll do whatever I have to do to make it work. And I'm going to try my best to make you so proud of me. Oh. I really will. <laughs> you know what? You don't have to try. You already have. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Cecile. Maybe when I get back... Oh, let's talk about it then, all right? Right now. I just want you to be able to leave knowing that I'll keep the complex going. You know what? I've just begun to realize how much I'm beginning to count on you for a lot of things. sound surprised. Yeah, I guess I do. Am I that much trouble? <laughs> you used to be. You and Denny used to be a handful when you were growing up. <laughs> I guess we were. And I guess Denny and I never really appreciated what it must have been like for you getting stuck raising your two uh, rather wild younger brothers. Oh, well, don't give yourself so much bad credit. It wasn't that terrible. <laughs> a little bad credit? I don't want to ruin my self-image, you know. <laughs> okay, a little bad credit. <laughs> Are you sure that I can't drive you to the dock? Oh, no, no, the bus will drop me right off at the landing. Sorry to see you go. You said that already. I guess I mean it. Oh, I'd stay longer, you know that. But I, but I got finals to make up. And if I miss any more practices, the coach will bump me. Yeah, I, I guess. It, it's just... Clarice, why don't you sit down? There, there's something I want to tell you. Um, you see, I was, uh, I was thinking this morning that, that what well, with Harry, uh, he's my trainer, about to retire and all, I, I really have to start looking for a new one anyway, and, and the hockey team up in Lakeland really isn't all that good. I mean, hardly good preparation for the Olympics, that's for sure. But the team here at Bay State is great. In addition to that, you have the Bay City Blues in town. And while I know they're a semi-pro team and I can never play with them and maintain my amateur status, I, I could go to all the games and watch them and, and maybe work out with them. I, and I also understand that, that, that Jackson... Uh... Hey, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Take your breath. Did you think about this this morning? Does it make any sense? Does what make any sense? <laughs> what we've been talking about. My moving here to Bay City. To live? Yeah. To live, and to go to school, and to play hockey. <sighs> if you don't have any objections. I haven't had time to think of any. Well? <laughs> I'd love it. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, I guess so. It sounds OK, doesn't it? It sounds better than OK. But what about Denny? Have you talked to him? Oh, no, no, I haven't had a chance. Like I said, I only really started thinking about it this morning. Well, I think you better talk to Denny about it. You lived with Suzanne and him for a long time. I think he'd be hurt if you just moved out. Well, I think it'd be better for him and Suzanne if I did just that. What do you mean? I kind of get the feeling things aren't, aren't going too well between the two of them. And that maybe having me around isn't helping. I didn't know. <laughs> now you do. Well, what do you think? Is, is it going to cramp the <laughs> style having your kid brother camping on the couch? On the couch? You have an extra room? On the couch. <laughs> I wonder what could be keeping Jamie. He'll be here. I don't doubt that, but we just got to get going. You went to Cecile's? Yes. He wanted Cecile to cover for us, uh, you know, to be our contact at the complex or on our other projects if anything needed our attention. You think she can do it? Well, I think she's very capable now. She's been working hard at the complex for a couple of years, you know. Yeah, well, she seems to be able to get what she wants. Do I detect a note of sarcasm? Maybe you're just reacting to the fact that she decided to drop Jamie. Well, when she did, she hurt him very badly. Well, she's had to grow up a lot lately, and so has Jamie. 
Well, I know, but that doesn't mean he can't get hurt again, and I don't want him to be hurt or used. You think she'll do that? Yes, I do. I think maybe you're being a little hard on her. And maybe not enough faith in Jamie's judgment of women. What about Blaine? Well, that was a long time ago. He was quite young then. Yeah, I know. But I'm not going to stand by and watch him get hurt again. What uh, other projects is Cecile handling? Oh, are we changing the subject? I'm just trying to pass the time. Well, she should let us know if anything goes wrong in the dock construction project that Taylor Halloway and I began. What about it? Well, it's under construction now. It's due for completion this summer if we keep on schedule. Is that important? Oh, yes, very, if we want to be operational in the peak period of shipping. Hi, sorry it took so long. No, it's all right. Uh, you settled everything with Cecile? Well, I explained everything to her as best I could. Hi, Grandma. Oh, sweet. Don't worry. She said she'd be glad to cover us while, for us while we're gone. Thank you. Good. I don't know what we'd do if we didn't have Cecile to fall back on. I guess we're pretty lucky, eh? Well, we've got a lot of good people there at the complex to hold the fort. Yeah. Don't worry about the children. No, no. I won't. I know they'll be well taken care of with you. That's one thing I have no intention of worrying about. Well, uh, I'll stay by the phone in case Rachel does call. Is there any place I can call you? Uh, not that we know of now. We'll keep checking back with you. Well, if anything very important happens, you can probably call Brian. He'll know what to do. Yeah, okay. Something wrong? Well, suddenly, Rachel's a fugitive, you know. It uh, doesn't seem real. I don't believe it's happening. Don't worry, Grandma. We're going to find her. I'm not worried about that. What are you worried about? Well, I know Rachel will be found. I just hope it's by you and before the police catch up with her. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another World.